anyone needs a tax form, see Sister Faye, she's not here today. Who is here today is Sister Jackie. If you need an appointment with Bishop, please see her. Raise your hand, Sister Jackie. So if you need an appointment with Bishop, please see her. Um, two weeks from today will be Bishop and Pastor's 19th anniversary celebration. Yeah. We will be serving you a fabulous meal after service, so please everyone plan on staying. Men's Super Bowl will be coming up, and you will be having fellowship here. Amen. 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 Church anniversary will be March 19th. That day we will be having two services, one at 10.30 and the other at 3 p.m. And then the new ones. There's a lot of them today, you guys. Shepherds Institute will be studying their new classes on the 21st. And, and this one will be about the offices of the church and the five-fold ministry. Anybody interested? I know I am. Okay. The next homeless meeting for, let's see, the next homeless meeting with Riverside County will be at the DHS library on the 26th. Men's Barbecue, World Club Barbecue Fundraiser will be on the 4th of February. So if you're a cook or you just like to serve, please come on out and help. Women's Fellowship will be on the 11th, 2-11 at 11. 2 11 at 11, you remember that one. And then once again, Men's Super Bowl Party will be on the 12th of February.
Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this bountiful blessing this morning, Heavenly Father. We pray as we receive it, Lord, that it's pleasing to you. Lord, I pray that you will do with, with it as you will in expanding your kingdom and giving you glory. In Jesus' holy name, I pray. Amen. Amen.
wonder what am I going to do once I get to this meet where all these big people were embracing it, right? You talk to Michael Johnson and John Bell, you know, all the world champions. And so the meet was supposed to be in Eugene, Oregon. And I laughed and I said, Coach, what am I going to do in Eugene, Oregon with all these high sponsored Nike athletes and gold medal, the gold medal winners and all that kind of stuff? I don't belong here. I said, I'm from a small town and a small school. I'm going to go out there and get mobbed. He said, yeah, you probably will get mobbed. He's real with me. He says, but I want you to go out there and don't focus on who's at the left or the right. I want you to focus on the finish line. He said, focus on the race. Now, mind you, uh, because of an injury, I didn't get to run in that beat. But I took that, I took that quote. John Carlos is his name. He was our coach in high school. He's still talking. Y'all know Mr. Carlos, right? right? And I took that quote, and I said, he put the fist up. That's it in 68. And I took that quote with me for the rest of my life and everything that I did. I said, no matter what I'm facing, I'm not going to focus on the opposition. I'm just going to see the finish line and everything. Yeah. But would you not know that as I matured in the faith and I got saved for real, there was a scripture that really tied into that quote. Now, I don't know, I believe Mr. Carlos is, is a follower of Jesus. I know that he's got a faith in something, but I know he wouldn't come from the Bible because he cussed me out right after he said it. So I know that. I know that. If you know John Carlos, you know he told you exactly what he felt, how he wanted to say it, right? And, uh, but Hebrews 12, it says, Therefore, we also, verse 1, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin. We always want to lay aside every weight, but it says, and the sin that easily ensnares us. And let us run with endurance, and when I say endurance, the race that is set before us. Looking unto Jesus, this is it, the author and finisher. So when I say finish, looking at the finish line of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the, of the throne of God. I want you to just, just really focus on this. Focus on the finish line. All right? Focus on the finish line. I know in previous years we started fast for God and we faded really quickly. You can't really beat yourself up because God's not condemning you at all. Right? The fact that you're still here means you have a chance to run harder. But then, too, in Zechariah, he says, I just rejoice in the fact that you even started the work. He's happy that you even started. And so sometimes people try to size you up and put you down because you started and you didn't finish. But God said, I don't care. You started. I'm happy that you started. And so I have anybody that started in here today, maybe started, okay, I'm starting, I'm starting, right? I'm starting, right? And so Paul, 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 Paul really wanted to hammer this point in. And he always, I love how Paul used athletics to try and, and try and, and, and relate his point. Y'all think this is weird because I tie sports into everything. No, Paul did it too. Paul did it on several occasions. In Galatians 2 and 2, he says, I want to make sure we're in agreement for that my efforts have been wasted and I was running this race for nothing. In Galatians 2, he says, look, I want to be sure that I was running this race for purpose. What he was talking about, I want to be sure that this race with God to make disciples and be a disciple, I want to make sure that I was actually doing the right thing. But then, even at the end of his life, when he's talking to Timothy in 2 Timothy 4, he says, the prize await me, right? He said, I fought the good fight, I finished the race, I remained faithful. At the end of his life, Paul is still using a parallel with racing and sports to demonstrate his life with Jesus. He says, listen, I finished the race. Now, if you know anything about the Apostle Paul, you'll understand starting in Acts chapter 8 when he's really introduced to the point where he's not on his beast and he's not converted to follow Jesus. And he goes on these missionary trips. He gets in prison for preaching the gospel. He goes to jail. He gets shipwrecked. He gets snake bitten and all that stuff. Had he not focused on the finish line, something would have taken him out. And so some of us in here, like Paul, we ran and we started running hard for Jesus and we got shipwrecked. We got in the wrong relationship and it shipwrecked us. He says, then I got snake and somebody close to me bit me and turned into a snake. He says, then I was in bondage. I was in the middle of bondage all of my life because I'm just trying to follow Jesus. And if here's the problem I need us to understand. Some of us quit because we didn't focus on the finish line. This is the one thing Coach told me. He says, I'm not concerned about your time. I'm not concerned about how fast you got out of the blocks. All I'm concerned about is that you finish the race. And so he says, now listen, you have a reason to be uh, encouraged to finish the race today. He says, we're surrounded by this great cloud of witnesses. Y'all forgive me, I have to blow this screen up because for whatever reason, it's set for a child's eyes. I need to, uh, I can't read 12 no more, brother. That's not, that's, that's not what I can do. So somebody, somebody say 16. Yes, there we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, if you're laughing, you ain't there yet. Keep on living. It's coming to you. All right. 
It says, therefore, you know it's bad when you text when you read a text and you gotta put the phone back like this. That's how that's where it is now. Since we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which easily ensnares us. Let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Let us let us let us look at the fact that we're surrounded by this great cloud of witnesses. And I used to think that was kind of in comparison to being in a Greek Olympic arena and you have all these people cheering you on. Because in my day, in the natural, if you, anybody ever run 400 meters, anybody ever run 400 meters? All right, one, two, thank you. All right, y'all need to get the shape of yourself. Y'all need to go. But, but the 400 meters is a grueling race, and the race is something else because now it's a full sprint. They shoot the gun, you gotta run a whole lap. And they shoot the gun, you take off running because the goal is to be the first person to get to the straightaway. Right, that's because once you get there, you're down the rabbit, everybody's trying to catch you. And you can do that, but then something happens to you when you come around to the next curve. We call it the bear jump on your back, whatever you want to call it, right? And that cute form turns into something like this, and you just look as bad as you want to look. And so, that is true, but something happens because the crowd starts cheering you on. And when the crowd starts cheering you on, you get stripped out of nowhere. This is what I found out. Paul wasn't talking about that. Yeah, yeah. If you expected somebody to cheer you on in the middle of this race, you better learn how to encourage yourself and the Lord. Because people will know you need encouragement if people ain't walking by. What Paul was saying is, I want you to understand that this cloud of witnesses are a bunch of people who have survived, passed the test, finished the race. They no longer are here, but they're resting in the bosom of Abraham. He says, look, I want you to get out there, and when you feel like you're by yourself and it's overwhelming, think of the devil. If you read chapter 11, the previous chapter, he talks about the wall of faith. Abraham is there. Rahab is there. Noah is there. You have people that endure things in Scripture that are in the stands right now watching you run this race. But you ain't even got to go to the Bible. My mama is there. My grandmother is there. Our grandparents are there. People that you have loved that have passed over the faith, they're in this crowd of witnesses. Not to cheer you on, but to give you an example to say, look, if she can make it and all the hell that she went through, if he can serve God with all the hell that he went through, I ain't got no business going to the town in this race. And so he says, you're surrounded by this great cloud of witnesses. When you get discouraged, this is, this is just me, this is, I don't know about you all, but I was raised by two amazing grandparents. And these two grandparents went through everything to the point where, with the evil of my grandmother, they said, uh, they, they, they said that uh, the cancer was terminal, they gave her a few months to live, and she whipped that cancer behind. Uh, she lasted another two years beyond what they expected. Cancer didn't take her, she gave it, she went home. That's just what it was. But I watched what they endured, my grandfather, what he endured through his sickness, how he was still strong. I watched how her mother endured. Her mother was carrying cancer that was terminal, my wife's mother, and we never knew it because every time she talked to us, she was smiling and she was cheerful and she was grateful. We didn't even know until it was too late that she was being eaten up inside. And I think about that and I say, well, what, what I'm going through is not that bad. The witnesses in the crowd had to deal with cancer in their body. And yet they stayed in the race, and I'm about to leave the race because somebody don't like me. I'm about to leave the race because somebody shaved me and rolled their eyes at me. Don't it make it seem real small when you think about all the people that have survived and ran the race and completed the race, went through, for us to quit so easily? This is what I learned about marriage, and I'm starting to get it. Do y'all know that the divorce rate in church in 2022 was higher than the divorce rate in the world? So I started asking questions and investigating. Two things came out. One, people spend more money and more time preparing the wedding than they actually be preparing for the marriage. So when the show is over, so is the marriage. But then there was an older man that told me something. He said he's at the gym at Costco every morning with his wife, and they can't do much. They walk in, bend over, but he tries to personally train her. It's cute. They haven't been there 55 years, I think, and they go there for 10 minutes, and they walk right back out and go to Costco. I said, how long have I been married? He says, oh, about 55 years, son. I said, oh, wow. How long have you been married? I said, oh, this is a couple years, it's 17. He said, oh. I said, can you give me some secrets and insight? How do you, how, 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 how? 17, I want to get to 20. How do you make 55? Can you tell me something? He said, in my day, when something was broken, we didn't throw it away and get a new one. We fixed it. I 
restaurant so my granddaddies drove that same 1975 Lincoln Continental clear to the 2000s. Because when it, when it went bad, they learned how to fix it. Now here it is in 2023, something go wrong, we're going to look for a new one. Tell somebody to stay in a race. Don't quit this year. Don't throw in a towel this year. Yeah, I, I know it's frustrating. I know it's hard. I know people are walking away from you. People are talking about you. Don't throw in a towel this year because here's the thing. If you can just pause and look around the stadium of your faith and see all the people who've endured what you've endured and more and yet be encouraged at the fact that they've finished, so can you. But then he says, lay aside every weight. Every weight. And the sin which is so easily ensnared us. Now, I told you, we always focus on the weight, but we don't really tackle the sin part. We say lay aside every weight. But there's a whole other part there. Now, I told you all back in the day, I think a few years ago, I told you all that when I was running track, the one thing they told us to do is, is take off everything on us that can weigh anything. Right? So, we go from getting to the stadium in sweatpants, headphones, and all that kind of stuff to getting on the track in speed suits. Because when it comes time to race, you want to make sure there's nothing that can be a little bit extra weighty on you. Because whatever is weighty on you slows you down. And I told you all, that was the first time ever I shaved my legs. Because I didn't know. I didn't know. They told me I shaved your legs because if your hair was, you got to take care. Fine, let's shave my legs. Now I'm on the track with no hair but more weight than band aids. I didn't know what I was doing. Probably legs just chopped all up, right? But it taught me something that's related to the scripture. Because when we run for Christ, we want to run as fast as we can. But how can we run as fast as we can when we have stuff that's weighing us down? Now check this out. Philippians 3 and 8, Paul says, For his sake, I discarded everything else that wasn't like him and counted all his garbage so I can gain Christ. Now we always look at it and say, okay, lay aside every weight as if it's something negative. Yeah, yeah, okay. The word weight there is not necessarily a negative connotation. It means whatever is a hindrance or a burden. Okay. What if I told you that your business was a hindrance between you and God? Would you be willing to lay it aside? See, when it's negative, yeah, I'm going to lay him aside. He ain't no good anyway. I'm going to lay her aside because she ain't no good anyway. I'm going to lay that aside because I don't need all those sweets anyway. But what if it's something that you love? What if you allow God to search your heart and point out whatever it is that was standing between you and him, and it was something that you absolutely love and adore, could you lay aside your career because you found out this is a weight between you and running for the Lord? I don't know. i got to get my coins up. <laughs> and he says, I'm the guy that supplies all your need. Maybe if I'm warning you to lay it aside, you better lay it aside before I take it away. And if I take it away, it's not going to be out. I hear what I'm saying. Right, right, right. Some of us, some of us, we love God with all of our heart on Sunday. But we leave here on Sunday and then we go back to worship and that is that we worship. And I don't know what it is for some people, but just think about this. When you go to read the Bible and for whatever reason you can't, whatever you end up doing is a hindrance. I was going to get up my word, but I got to get up to work in the morning. Somebody say hindrance. I was going to go to bed, but the, but the game was on. Somebody say hindrance. I was going to go to bed, but they had a sale in Burlington. Somebody say hindrance. Yeah, the Burlington sale. That's what it is. This is what it is. Yeah, I can't get in there anymore. I'm just saying, it's your own. Hindrance. Last night, I was trying to go to bed. Because I already had the premise of the message today. And that's rare. Normally, God give me something that I can write about in the morning on Sunday. Gave to me yesterday. I said, cool, we get it. So about 7 o'clock, they're like, I'm ready to go to bed. The Giants play at 1 tomorrow. I can relax tonight, go home, I'll be good. Got some catfish for the game, and I'm ready to go. It's already played out. And I'm trying to go to bed focusing on the Word and focusing on Jesus. The goodness. So I went to the kitchen, I, 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 have a, I have a full gallon and a half water tank that I drink out of at night so I can eat out your easily. So I went to the kitchen and get some ice and fill it up. I'm not focused on the cookies, I'm focused on water. Kayla comes out the room. She ain't been out the room in an hour. Anybody see that? She come out the room. What you doing? I want a cookie. Okay. Just that fast. Just that fast. 
Y'all went back to the bedroom with a full thing of water and two cookies. <laughs> Last night I felt the test to lay aside the weight. Because in that moment I was focusing on God and the work of this morning. And I allowed the cookie to hit the car. Oh, it's so good. He know he got some coke milk on my head. And then so good. <laughs> right. So what if it's something that you absolutely love that God says lay aside because it's standing between me and you? What if it's that relationship, y'all been together for 15 years and you ain't married you yet? But you're comfortable and God said lay aside that weight because it's standing between you and I. Ooh, you know what I'm saying? What if it's the opportunity to, to work overtime after you committed to do something for the Lord? Lord, tomorrow I'm going to go feed the homeless. A job call and say, okay, I need you to do some overtime. I got to get my coins up. What if that job is a way he said, I need you to lay that aside to do my will? Yeah. I'll be with you. Right? Yeah. Anybody mad at me? I'm yeah. probably cursing the giants right now. Lord, I hope they can split us. <laughs> Whatever is a burden, whatever is a hindrance. <coughs> We're willing to drop the burdens, but I'm willing to acknowledge the hindrance. And once God shows us a hindrance to our walk, we're willing to drop that thing. Yeah. Some of the things that we do, some of the habits that we have, some of the places that we go, we didn't even think it's a hindrance because we don't feel conviction going there doing it. But what if God says it isn't? What if God searches your heart and shows you that is a hindrance? Are you willing to walk away from it just to run this race? Amen. But then he goes, but the sin which clings so closely to you, but the sin that easily ensnares us. When he says ensnares us, if you read the Greek lexicon, it doesn't say the sin that ensnares us, it's a sin that, the sin that clings so closely to you. Now, if we're honest, we all have some sin that, that, that clings closely to us. We sit here in church with judgmental eyes and toes when it comes to sins that we don't do. Well, I don't drink, so uh, shame on him. I don't sleep where I sleep, but you do something. Okay, this side, you do something. Yeah, that side, I don't do nothing. I'm yeah, you say all that too. But this side, we do something over here. There's something that just naturally comes to us that we do. My, 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 my supervisor yesterday, he said something so key. We were in training for coaches, and he said, listen, Paul said that I was the chief sinner. He said, I'm a sinning machine. That's what he said. I said, I need to write that down. He said, my body and my mind has a way to produce sin like you wouldn't even know. I'm a machine. Thank God for the blood of Jesus and the Holy Ghost. Because if I didn't have it, I'd be out there producing sin. But now this I want to clap. Okay, so they were shooting up and down with this. Now, now they get, right, right. But first, I'm just too saying that now they clap. But he says the sin that easily ensnares us. Something easily ensnares you is something that you cling to that's close to you anyway. Yeah. Those cookies. Those cookies are too close to me. You need to get those out of the house. But my cookies are your what? Somebody says shopping. You got your paycheck, you blessed it, and you gave it to God. God told you exactly what to do with that paycheck. I'm giving, I'm doing this, I'm paying my bills. And then you get an email from Mike. Go. See, this side, they don't do nothing. This is us. They do nothing over there. They just... we, we need two services. One for the default, and those ones that's going to be on their soul today, right? right. Default, your service start on February 30th. Come here, 10 o'clock. That's over here. I come on to church February 30th. That's over here. Easily, so you start, what, what's easily and scary? What's close to you? What, what, what is habitual? What comes second nature? When I'm trying to do what the Lord said and somebody stuck on my foot, what comes second nature? Is it second nature gossip? Second nature. If you have to pray for God to deliver you from your gossip and tongue, that's second nature. That means I'm having a struggle with you. If you go to the altar and Lord, help me with my mouth because I don't want to cuss, but I find myself cussing anyway. And I don't just cuss, I cuss like a professional. I do it good. I make up stuff that make it sound right. Lord, help me with my mouth. That's sin that's close to you. He said, lay aside every burden, every hindrance, and that thing that you know I don't like, but you find yourself doing it anyway. Don't feel bad because Paul said in Romans chapter 7, the things I don't want to do, I find myself doing anyway. He says, I don't want to do this. I know it's the evil man in me. He said, but thanks be to God. He said, but thanks be to God. 
Because had it not been for the power of the Holy Spirit and the redemption of the blood of Jesus, I would be able to overcome this thing. But God has said, listen, whatever that thing is, nobody knows it but you. Whatever it is. Come on. Lay it aside. Lay it aside. Yeah. Now, I need us to understand that whatever this thing is, it's not the devil's fault.
And December 31st, he lost consistency. Yeah, yeah. One thing, one, one, thing, one, thing, one, thing coach, one thing coach told me, he says, listen, how you start is how you finish. That's what he told me, how you start is how you finish. And so I noticed that I still have, I still got these CRs, anybody? One, two. Okay, we got like four of these CRs in the house, that's cool. So if y'all want to have a watch party, I got a track meet from like 2000, the like OVHS. It's, it's right next to the last Cowboy Super Bowl. It's right there, right there. And, and I'm going to get them too. And in the, get them too. On the race, you can tell what happened. On two specific races, there's one race where they shoot the gun and I come out kind of soft. And I spent the middle of the race struggling and straining. I ended up winning the race, but I didn't have to run that hard. The next race, I came out the box like a bullet, and I finished like a bullet. So I just consistency. <laughs> what does that look like? If I'm going to grow in the Lord, I have to grow in the Word. Which means that I have to be consistent in reading my Word. Now you might say, I don't have two hours of study every day, but you got five minutes. There's devotions that you read five minutes. I, I, have them, I just got one for Christmas. Got one for a son. You can read that. It's a Tony Doji devotional, and it's one page. You mean to tell me you can't stop for five God is that good to you? You love God that much that you can't give him five minutes. Yeah. Come on. So I say consistency. consistency. I'm not going to talk about coming to church, but I'm talking about demeanor when you do come to church. You should be consistent in your demeanor when you come to church. Enter into this with what? Enter into this what? With what? I understand sometimes we have a bad day. I have a bad couple weeks. You mean tell me you got a bad year? You can't be joyful no time you enter into the house of God. The Holy Spirit come here and hit everybody but you. Every week. Every month. Every year. Breakthroughs happen in the house for everybody except for you. Every week. Every month. Every year. Well, if everybody go to a restaurant and get full and you leave hungry, chances are I want to come to the restaurant.
way and let three back there. Yeah. Yeah. And two crazy dogs on the corner. That's my first ministry. My calling after my first ministry is here. How dare I allow a paycheck to pull me from my first ministry and my call? So if that's you and you're struggling with that, that's grace for you. God said the fact that you're still here today means that you got a chance to commit it back to me. And let me steward your time out for you. The thing does not belong to you, it belongs to God. Okay. Here's the last thing. He says, now, we do all this. We lay aside every weight. We take off the sin of these leaking contractions. We run this race with endurance and consistency by keeping our eyes on Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Remember I said focus on the finish line. This is why Coach told me, don't worry about who's next to me. We're at this meeting with Cal Nevada State meeting, where UC Berkeley, UC Berkeley has an amazing, I've never seen a yellow track in my life. Yellow track with blue lights. I was like, this is, we didn't have, I was six six elevators. And then we don't have any happen. We have flip phones and two-way pages. But anyways, uh, see y'all old too. Y'all know, okay, I'm here. Right. So we're on the track, and they call out the names, and the crowd goes crazy. Somebody, somebody, Fresno State, the crowd goes. Somebody, somebody, USC. Somebody else, UCLA. Lane six. Keeper Shepherd. University of Laverne, you've heard a cricket drop. 6,000 people in the stadium, nobody said anything. So I go back to the start blocks and it's a curve. So we out there stretching out and I'm, and I'm, I'm stretching and I'm watching USC, you know, going crazy. Steroids. Then I'm watching UCLA, going crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm watching all them warm up and I immediately start to get nervous. Like, oh my God. Like, I'm shrinking in the moment because I'm standing next to these dudes who look like monsters out here. Coach says, shut up! What? Come here. What you doing? Just checking out the warmers. You let them take you back your thing. Get back over there and have fun today. You know me over there? Run, 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 run. Sometimes you gotta get off TikTok. Sometimes you gotta get off Facebook. 
So sometimes you got young. Know, somebody said, hey, man, we covered it on your thing. You didn't even cut it. I said, I came back. I, I posted it, and then God called me to do something else. I came back two days later. Y'all after the four, I had to delete it. Because I had to before the post. Right? But at the end of the day, God, was, God said, listen, that's enough of that. You can come and do this. Sometimes you got to close out everything that causes you to be distracted from Jesus. Yes. Amen. And we always focus on things. But sometimes you got to block some people. All right, we talk about people. Sometimes you gotta watch some family. I love our family. We're not as big as we used to be, but we got we, we here. We here. But there's some in the family where I can always just speak to and tell them I love them and keep on moving because they're not serving the God that I serve. And if they are, that I serve them at the level I'm trying to serve them at. God, I hear me. Which means that I may have to shut you out just to be able to stay in focus on Jesus. If they tell you it don't take all that, you might want to shut them out. Because they don't know what it takes for you to get closer to Jesus. If they own the slide in so true in your faith, you might want to shut them out. Because they don't know what it takes for you to stay close to Jesus. So you may have to be the oddball. You may be the one that's not invited to everything. They stopped inviting Jesus to. You may be the person that has to see everything on Facebook because they don't want to fool with you. That's okay. Because you're focusing on Jesus as the author and the finisher. Y'all stay in the race. Stay in the race. So this is what happened. We are now at that meeting. And I done marked at everybody because they marked at me. We now get the starting blocks. I've been laying six. They shoot the gun. We take off running. I'm not poking. And it's hard on, not to look at nobody on 200 because you come off the curve. You kind of got to look at you know look at where you're going. Come off the curve and get to the straightaway. Where now all you can see is the finish line and the clocks and all that kind of stuff. I hear a coach from the stands. Look straight ahead. Didn't even know somebody was in front of me because I was looking at the finish line. Crossed the finish line, ran the race of my life. Looked down, coach and the teammates came and they hugged me. They said, You qualified for the Olympic trial. He's like, What? I'm out of breath because, you know, I don't know why they want to interview right after you run. You can't talk. And so I'm laying, I'm laying on the ground, looked up, and I took third place. I didn't win the race, but I qualified. <laughs> It's not about how fast you run. It's not about how many scriptures you know. It's not about how many tongues you speak in. It's not about how many degrees that you have. It's just the fact that if you finish the race, you qualify. Okay. This year, don't compare yourself to anybody else. You finish the race so you can qualify. Qualify for what? Paul said that crown that I'm going to get as a reward. That jewelry that I'm aware of because I finished the race. Jesus said the first shall be last and the last shall be first. So even matter what place you come in, just finish the race. You're here today and you need some encouragement. Because you're tired of the same old cycle. You say insanity is doing what you've always done, expecting something different. And you want this year to be different, so you want to do different. But you don't feel like you have the ability, the authority, or the wherewithal to commit to doing different.
If you ever watch Carl Lewis in the Olympics, whenever he got the stick, he got it in his left and switched to his right. Because you have to finish with your right hand. Okay? I'm just telling you what I know. And so on today, I am going to anoint your right hand. I'm going to pray that the anointing the rest of my life is just to you so you can finish strong this year. And I'm welcome back to make this commitment the third week in January. Which means that we have a whole year to live with Jesus. Is that something? Come on, Father, we thank you. For the encouragement to finish the race on today. Lord, it's our desire not to burn out like we did last year. It's our desire to start strong and finish strong. God, it's our desire to be able to focus only on you. We commit today to not focus on what's happening on the left or the right. We're not going to be intimidated by what anybody else is doing in the kingdom. We're going to focus on our assignment on today. But God, give us the strength to lay aside and weight and give us the awareness to get rid of that burden. That thing that hinders us that we may not even see. Lord, those easy sins that we fall into repeatedly. Like, give us the strength to recognize and show up and walk away. It's our desire to stand strong and to be a witness Ooh, and an example before this great kind of things is watching us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come on from the back. Come on, come on, come on, come on.
We want to give you an opportunity to know him. We would not leave this service without you knowing Jesus by invitation. Maybe you know him and you kind of took a couple steps back and you want to rededicate your life to him today. If that's you, raise your hand. It is now 1201. Amen. Amen.
Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. In Jesus' holy name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.